Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Natick. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is uh, Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 70 of us at Myrick O'Connell, biggest law firm outside of Boston. That's my ad, my only ad. Um, but as a result of there being so many lawyers, everybody gets to do what they like. And I do like elder law um, because I'm old. Um, and so that's what I do. But this show is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've ever been to a presentation of mine, I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and they want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. That's their goal. And if they're in Natick, they don't want to live in far away San Jose or, or Palo Alto, where one of our guests actually was, grew up, or any of those far away places. They want to live here. And so the question is, who are the people and, the, and what are the programs that you need to know about in order to stay right here happily uh, for the rest of your lives? And um, because I don't know who those might be, I enlisted the help of this wonderful co-host, Susan Ramsey. And we've done the shows now for about a, a we're, year. Yeah, we're coming up on our first anniversary. To just, and she just keeps finding these great people and talk, to talk about these great programs that are right here in Natick. So Susan, who do we have today? Well, today we're very fortunate to have um, two folks, two of my colleagues who mm -hmm. work in the public health department. And uh, we're going to be talking about our efforts here in Natick around substance abuse and prevention and our efforts around the o op opioid epidemic um, that is confronting just everywhere um, across the nation and the world. And then um, on the second half of our show, we're going to be speaking with our public health nurse here in Natick, whom I like to refer to as our best hidden asset. That's right, because at Frank and Mary, everyone's going to say, or who? Do right. we have a public health, health nurse? Health nurse, that's be, right. This will be great. Exactly. This will be great. So I'm delighted that Katie Sugarman was able to join us today. Mm -hmm. She's now been here working in Natick, first at the public high school. Yeah. Um, and then came over to expand her work mm -hmm. and her reach here in town That's and, right. um, and has really done incredible work with engaging the community and starting many initiatives and programs, which is raising awareness as well as providing some direct assistance and training to people. Yes. So we're delighted you could join us. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. And we know it won't be enough time to cover everything. <laughs> we'll um, do what we can. We, exactly. And we can always have you back, which would be great. Sure. Um, so I think the best thing um, is let's maybe... Ju let's have just kind of talk about that. We were yeah. talking earlier about the fact that while both of your parents were from Massachusetts, you actually were raised in, in some far off place where not, which is now I think burning. Everything out there is just burning I down. I grew up in the northern part of uh, California, but yeah. I only was there until I was about five years old. So oh. It was a short little stint in my life. I've oh, been more oh, on oh. the east coast for the majority of my life. So. I got it. I got it. Well, it's, it's great that you could come on. And Thank it, it's, you. It's, 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 I do nothing but elder law, so I'm bumping into this all the yes. time. Mm -hmm. Both abuse issues are among folks who are older and also that dealing with, as I mentioned to you, I have a wonderful client who just came back from the funeral of her grandson outside of New York City yeah. who was an overdose so these are issues that are mm -hmm. really prominent for people right absolutely and I, yeah and I think what's most striking is that it's um, it hits everybody mm -hmm. it's not really isolated to mm -hmm. one group of people or someone in a particular area um, it's I can't think of anyone who hasn't been affected um, by this crisis that we're facing. Mm -hmm. So Katie, Absolutely. can you catch us up with some of the things that have been happening? And sure. um, I know that there's a number of support groups and some other uh, community initiatives and some new things. So sure. the broad brush stroke, as it were. Broad brush stroke. <laughs> so, um, so thank you again for having me. I really am delighted to be here and appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with both of you and our larger community. So my role at the Natick Health Department is as the um, Prevention Outreach Program Manager. And I, in that role, I actually um, am the uh, director of our community coalition, which is a partnership between our municipality and community organizations and individuals and parents and people in recovery and youth and all of these different sectors of the community. And that coalition is actually called um, Natick 180, so Natick 180. And um, we recently went through this uh, 
um, process over the past year of coming together in that coalition and naming ourselves that for two reasons. One was that we are trying to address the 180 degree spectrum of substance use in this coalition. So while we are absolutely still focused on and triaging the opioid crisis that continues to impact families across this wonderful community, um, and to Susan's point, across demographic sectors, different stripes of politics and, and faith and, and everything in between. Red, um, blue, or purple. Absolutely. Yeah, Unfortunately, right. addiction does not discriminate. Um, so while we still continue to work um, you know, fiercely on the opioid crisis, we also recognize that if we're not doing prevention simultaneously, we will be continuously chasing our tail. And if it's not the opioid crisis now, it could be a cocaine crisis you know, five years from now. Right. So we, it's really important that we try to do both simultaneously. Um, so um, in terms of some of the supports and resources we have kind of worked over the past couple of years to put in place for individuals and families who are impacted by addiction, um, we have have, um, a number of things. Unfortunately for those who have lost a loved one, we have started a bereavement group for um, families called The Journey. Um, it's facilitated by a parent here in the community who lost um, who lost a child several years ago to overdose. Mm -hmm. um, that bereavement group actually meets at the Community mm -hmm. Senior Center on the last Tuesday of each month. So actually the next one is coming up um, on um, November 27th. <laughs> Tuesday, November yeah. 27th. At, at, um, at what time? Seven 7 p.m. It's 7. Yeah. Um, and we actually do have a really great website called natick180.org where um, people can get the schedule and you can get contact information right. if you're trying to get some more information about that briefing group. We also have a calendar of meeting and events on and that was just, website. Uh, before we started, you also mentioned you'd like us to, you're going to be, be giving us some of that data so that our wonderful sure. friends at Pegasus I will can put that up. Yep, absolutely. Show, right? I can share some websites and great. some um, helplines and that sort of thing mm -hmm. so people can see it at the end of this show. Um, but um, we also now have have um, an, an outreach team that goes out with um, the police department after overdoses occur to do outreach to individuals and families who are impacted to um, assist them with connecting to services if they would if they're willing or ready to accept services. That's a great, so it's not just at the, it's like after the emergency. Exactly. Be, that's a great idea. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also developed resource cards that first responders do leave at the scenes of overdoses, as yeah. well as, frankly, I mean, there are a lot of different types of reasons why our first res responders might interact with somebody around an, in, an, an incident that involves substances, but not might not be an overdose. You know, there are car accidents. There might be, you know, an occasional dispute in a private residents or that sort of thing where alcohol or other substances might be involved. Alcohol is still the number one misused substance in our country. Um, so it's really important that our first responders have resources that they can carry on them, they can leave with people, mm -hmm. um, but then also that we can actually deploy um, support services to them, you know, a couple of days later, maybe after things have kind of settled down a little bit and, and kind of try to build a little bit of a relationship. Um, we also have it, we now have an embedded mental health clinician within the police department who actually does ride along. So if there's a crisis playing out in real time where mental health or substance use related issues are um, part of the, the crisis, um, that clinician can actually assist in both hopefully de-escalating the situation, but also in making referrals, doing assessments, and that sort of thing. And that person has been in place since I believe about April of this year. And, and that that's, that's a trend that um, our neighboring community, Framingham, has yep. had that clinician um, for many approach years. for many many years yes. and it's proven incredibly effective so we've been delighted that Natick has been able to kind of adapt this best practice yes That's great. now how, how does that work so is is this is a non-police Mm -hmm. Officer, correct. Not a licensed social officer. worker. It's a licensed yeah. social worker. Yeah. Correct. And they get and they get brought in whenever there's this kind of case, yeah, or are they, they literally on, they're, du on they're duty. They're on duty. Their <laughs> their office space is at the Natick Police Department. So they, uh, the the wow. individual is actually a clinician employed by Advocates, which is a nonprofit agency based out of Framingham. I see. I see. They have developed this. Um, it's called a jail diversion program model. So mm -hmm. they actually developed the model that Framingham mm -hmm. and a number of other neighboring communities have, where they actually train super and support the clinical staff who are physically located 
during all their shifts right in the police departments of the communities that they serve. And so rather than um, you know emerg psychiatric emergency services having to be deployed to some of these mm -hmm. scenes after the fact, um, this clinician can literally ride along in a cruiser with a police officer right to the scene um, and, and assist you know in real time. That's so. a great idea across these issues and a whole bunch of issues. Yeah, so anything many, exactly. related to mental health right. or yeah. substance Because so much crime is just, you know, it's people, there's, there's a trigger, there's a short trigger involved, right. there's substance abuse involved, there's some kind of problem. That's really mm -hmm. good. Right, That's right. Really good. And you know, I'd be ris remiss if I didn't mention um, the fact that we also have a medication disposal program at our police department. Mm -hmm. um, that has been in place for several years now and you know especially to anybody in our community who um, knows that they or a loved one might have quite a few medications in their household whether it's prescription or over-the-counter um, even veterinarian medications um, as long as they're not liquid can be brought to the police department and just anonymously dropped in the um, kiosk right in the lobby of the uh, police department so um, you know people are obviously encouraged to take their own identifying information off of any pill bottles that sort of right. thing but they can be disposed of right in that um, kiosk at the police department and it's really important that folks get some of those medications out of their homes if they're not using them and they don't need them because right. it does a reduce the risk of people diverting them so whether that's a young person a, a grandchild or even just a stranger a visitor who might be in somebody's household for a few moments it, it removes some of that temptation to open up a medicine cabinet and try something out um, right. but um, but be it also is better for our environment. It's better to get rid of some of these medications through proper disposal channels rather than flushing them down the toilet. Right, or that going sort to the thing. landfill. You know, exactly. Right. Right. Who knows exactly. What, what's going to happen. Right. Exactly. That's, that's a really good point. So, so just as a, as, a, as, a, as a kind of a good citizen matter. Right? Absolutely. So proper storage and disposal of medication is absolutely something everybody can try to do you know, today to try to reduce um, the addiction that happens in our communities. Um, and then another thing that actually when you um, speak with our public health nurse, Leela, you might even hear a little bit from her. Um, we actually partner very closely, Leela and I, on, in distributing Narcan into our community. So Narcan is the brand name, the um, generic name is naloxone, but it's an intranasal medication that can help reverse an opioid overdose that's in progress. Um, mm -hmm. It does not solve the issue. Um, certainly um, a person who receives Narcan should get immediate medical services. They should get to an emergency department as quickly right. as possible because it only temporarily reverses that overdose right. for a window of about 30 to 90 minutes. But it does keep you from being dead. So it does solve exactly. that issue. Yes. That exactly. Kind of very short term exactly. issue. Right. Yeah. It provides exactly. an opportunity to yeah. seek treatment. Exactly. Which is important. Absolutely. And it's it's challenging because I know a lot of people might question should we be distributing that, but the reality is that um, you know we put AED devices and defibrillators and things out in our communities all the time so that when somebody is in a life threatening situation, it does not matter what their history of exercise or if they've taken care of themselves or they've eaten healthy or they've smoked smoked cigarettes or whatever we don't in those moments say well I don't think this person deserves to be revived because I know I saw them smoking outside before they came into this building right. we see a person who's in crisis and we save them and we hope that that gives them an opportunity for the services that they right. really need who will help them get towards health so Katie um, for families are they able to have uh, Narcan and be trained as well and have absolutely. it available in their homes and absolutely how would, how would they would they contact you directly to inquire about that so they can contact the Natick Health Department directly um, and make an appointment for a personal con consultation usually Leela our public health nurse provides that one-on-one -on -one, um, with an individual or maybe a couple if say parents wanted to be trained together I also go out, go out into the community and do a lot of group training so I've done trainings in churches, I've done them in local businesses, nonprofits, our community senior center staff right. have been trained, our library staff mm -hmm. have been trained. Um, and so um, this is really a first aid response, frankly, to this opioid crisis. And so um, so I am, can also be contacted, but if anybody just calls the public health department directly and we'll make sure that phone number is available at the end of this program, um, they can get either Leela or myself to provide you that either that personal consultation that or a community training. That's great. This is just so good. Right? <laughs> but, but, because it's interesting when you talk about it, because I mean, it, it makes me think of some of the dementia friendly community stuff where you're really thinking about really going to a whole variety of players, yep. right? And getting everybody into the system so mm -hmm. that you can be kind of right. taking care of people yep. who've got a particular mm -hmm. problem. And you're not judging, you know, you're not, you know, we'll give you, there are a million ways you could end up, you could end up with a, with a, 
for example, with an opioid problem. You know, this could have been a car accident right. with a lot of pain, and next thing you know, you just pop and you know, you're just going in that you're going that way. And somebody might not even have an addiction diagnosis and could still accidentally overdose. Okay, I mean, exactly. you know, um, especially members of our of our elder community receive prescriptions for various medications and some of the most common ways that people overdose on opioids is when they are combined with either alcohol, which again is very present in many of our households, right. um, or benzodiazepines, which are, um, you know, sedative or kind of anti-anxiety medications that like Valium that and, and Xanax that many people also have in their households. So we really appreciate the fact that you've talked fast because even talking fast, we're fast out of talker. time. But <laughs> this was great. This it was, was just wonderful. Yes. So can you invite her back again? We certainly maybe next will. Year? Anytime. Absolutely. That, that would be great. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Uh, and we'll be back uh, shortly after the non-commercial. Thank you very much. So welcome back. I don't know if there was really a commercial in there, but welcome back. Uh, to the second half of uh, Frank and Mary here in Natick. So Susan, my friend Susan Ramsey, your, your Council on Aging Director has got like another great guest. This, this show is like all about health. This it is. is. All Today about health. is all about health and a good time of year to think about it. We should be focusing on it. With Thanksgiving um, dinner, based on this taping, we'll all be sitting down hopefully to a nice there. full Thanksgiving right. meal oh. next week and then into the holiday season and probably eating and drinking a little too much then we normally do, so it's good for us to focus on health oh, no. a little bit. Oh. Yes, yeah. And, you ha and we have to talk about this? And so we have this? another member of our health department here in Natick, Leela Mercer, who is our uh, resident uh, registered nurse <laughs> and practitioner who has um, been working here in Natick for quite a number of years now. And I've had uh, the pleasure of um, uh, being introduced to Leela when I first started at the uh, Community Senior Center. Um, I started during flu season mm -hmm. and uh, so very quickly I came, became acquainted with Leela and her core volunteers who helped during uh, fuel, flu season, um, making certain that everyone has their flu shots and are she prepared for the season. I've never heard of a public health nurse that has her own volunteer staff. This well, I, well, I feel it's a core of volunteers. There's, yes. there's a, a really strong base of volunteers um, through the Medical Service Corps um, that's present here. And I think in addition to that, you may have some other volunteers um, that circle through the, the health department. So they really get the word out and help to get many people in and out of flu clinics. Um, but that's just one little area that Leela focuses on. and. Um, she visits us and is available at the Natick Community Senior Center on a monthly basis uh, to meet with folks. Um, but I'm not going to keep talking. So I'm going to so let this, you, this I'm going to turn it stuff. over to Leela because yeah. she has all the information, yes. and it's so important because I think um, yeah, I said she's one of our our best hidden assets, and I mean that. I think people are unaware of the scope of service that a municipality's health department um, you know, touches the residents. And the public health nurses are one of those critical areas and an, an amazing resource, not only directly to the residents of town, but also to um, the colleagues in the other departments. And I would think especially among seniors, because you have, I mean, especially, that's, yes. One, one, one thing that kind of differentiates seniors from other parts of the population is there's just more of a likelihood mm -hmm. that people have got health issues, right? right. That part of your life. So, so how do you do all that? <laughs> and, and, and now, have you been here for a long, have been in well, for a long for, time? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. I, you know, and to have the opportunity to explain um, the hidden asset of yes. public health nurse. Yes. And, um, I have been here for, <clears throat> I started here in Natick in 2004. So it's been 15 years. It's a long time. Um, yeah. And I had preceded that with six years in Framingham Health Department. Mm -hmm. And that's where I kind of got my start in, in my uh, taste of public health nursing. So um, it, there's, um, and, and, there's a lot to offer. There's through. a lot to offer. And why did you decide to do that versus other kinds of nursing? What's, what's well, the, I mean, I'm, I've been in various specialties over the years, yeah. um, hospital-based and community-based. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, the opportunity came up to um, um, uh, do some nursing in, in the health department in Framingham, which is where I lived at the time. And yeah. it was um, kind of a convenient thing. And um, 
it was nice because there were no weekends involved. Oh, <laughs> I mean, those good. were the initial <laughs> things, but I mean, but I'll tell you, once I caught the bug of um, uh, serving a community, um, it, there was tremendous learning, involved, but I, I loved it more and more over time. So. Right. And I think another um, kind of specialty niche and opportunity for public health nurses is the education aspect. Mm -hmm. You just have so many opportunities mm -hmm. to share information. And I think for people, All it's that I love to such do. a great opportunity, especially to do that one-on-one -on -one and yeah. feel comfortable and knowing that you have someone to reach out to for information. So, but as far as how do I do all this, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of, I mean, there is a lot of autonomy um, involved, yeah. but um, we, do, um, we do rely on each other in neighboring communities as well. We're very much a networking specialty. But um, I was thinking of your comment about the volunteer force. Mm -hmm. um, many people are familiar especially our elder community with the flu clinics you know they've been going on for years and years mm -hmm. and um and that happens right is that is that at the senior center is that well we do have or? we have our major a major public flu clinic at the senior center it's Same. one of several yeah right uh, we just completed our last uh, public clinic last Thursday uh, at the town hall oh so um, there's not just one it's like you know oh, and there are many yeah. right I do target um, <clears throat> uh, the elder community too, like at Cedar Gardens um, and um, Sherwood Village are two mm -hmm. targeted communities mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. have smaller clinics at. Um, we have, uh, I have built up my um, homebound, um, mm -hmm. immunizations for homebound, um, where if, if um, someone is unable to leave the home, I mean they still have a need to be protected against the flu and other vaccinations for that matter. Um, and um, we have that set up in place where I'll, I will go out and, and make home visits. And you're not just doing flu vaccinations, you're covering I, other things? I actually have a whole adult vaccination program mm -hmm. that um, I can go, sometimes it'll be for homebound. Um, yeah. I do have it by appointment in my office. Mm -hmm. Any adult in Natick um, who is in need of a vaccination, um, mm -hmm whether it be for the, the Tdap, which is tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, yeah. or um, pneumonia shots, um, so other, other vaccines besides uh, flu, yes. Um, I, I do have that whole program set up, mm -hmm. and we're able to service uh, adults as well as children yeah. um, for no cost. For no cost? For no cost. And is there an income requirement? Do they need to show you that no. they've, no? No, they're just no talking to you. This is just by virtue of the fact that they live in Natick. This is by the fact that they live in Natick. It's a service yeah, that's it's provided. It's a really tremendous service. So, um, but our volunteer, but as far as a f having a clinic set up, yeah. we have, um, we do have the medical reserve corps, mm -hmm. which is under the, under my um, coordination as well. So is this just a Natick thing? The medical, <laughs> I, I don't remember hearing about this. No, it's a national this. program. Yes. We are a yeah. unit. Um, I see. And that's organized here in Natick, but part a of a region. I see. And then the region is part of the national. Mm -hmm. So right. the Medical Reserve Corps. Medical Corps. Reserve Corps is a volunteer group here in Natick that anybody, I have, I'll tell you, the, probably um, it, a good proportion are people who are retired. Yeah. Um, although we have all ages. Um, <clears throat> but they are able to volunteer their time to, in the event of a um, disaster. Mm -hmm. um, or emergency, emergency in the town, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and we were able to um, deploy our volunteers to um, say a weather-related event if we have to set up a shelter, mm -hmm. uh, which one of our sites for sheltering is at the senior mm -hmm. center, the community senior center, mm -hmm. and we are able to um, supply that. Um, the and people I, are trained that way. I can say too, Arthur, that they are an incredibly um, fast <laughs> group to deploy. Uh, last year here in Natick, we had a number of days where we were without power. Yes. Residents were in certain sections, and there was a need to open up the senior center yes. to provide um, a place for people mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. And the call was made, and it was within an hour, volunteers were on site and readying everything. Thing and we're ready to serve people coming in. So, 
in yep. like within that hour's time. This is um, the most amazing thing. It was really I never incredible. Heard of, I don't, how have I never heard of this before? I don't know. We try to get the word out. Well, no, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I live in far away Marlboro. Okay. That's why I've, I've, Well, Marlboro has their own too. I just had, but you yeah. know, for all the conversations that I've never heard about. But them. we do, we do yeah. utilize the volunteers in yeah. our flu clinics. Yeah. We utilize um, the clinic at the community senior center as um, what we call an emergency dispensing site. We use it as a site for a drill, and we pretend, basically pretend that it is um, a situation where we have to do mass distribution of medication during a either a terrorist event or mm -hmm. some other unexpected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and we did have evaluators there this mm -hmm. year um, that actually were taking notes and you know offering ways to improve. And, mm -hmm. um, but but they do they they. Um, we, we do that yearly. Um, yeah, to do it's that. really, it's, and it's, it's amazing to watch, and it's it's just another benefit, I think, to residents here in Natick. It's wonderful. Yeah. And it is, it is um, um, medical as well as non-medical yes. people. We have a yes. great need for non-medical people as well. So if people ever, I could, I can um, <clears throat> offer more information. Um, mm -hmm. I was gonna say, know, we should have that information up yeah, on the screen. Yeah, we can have that. that. We yeah. could probably have that on the, uh, right. you know, at great. the end of the, um, program because it, it, it just never occurred to me that, that, that of course you've got this huge pool of people who mm -hmm. are retired mm -hmm. who are in some peeps of the medical profession because I know so often many of our nurses are retired nurses, they're retired that, nurses. that do the flu shots, the shots. Right. Yeah. Well, we have other ages as well but yeah um, but no many of them are retired the same thing with um, registration and uh, controlling the traffic uh, activity in the in the building and all those things, there's many, many parts. So I think also if there's ever any concern or an emergent uh, or a crisis situation mm -hmm. is uncovered by another town department, uh, Leela is also another resource that yeah. can respond and there's to a lot of, um, an effort. Yes, there's a lot of collaboration too amongst the members of the health department. I will go out sometimes if there's a, say the police department or the fire department comes across a a potential hoarding situation, mm -hmm. which is, um, that is a, it's a legitimate problem. Mm -hmm. um, but there may be other medical issues going on as well. So if the police will notify the health department, the health department tries to um, um, establish a relationship um, with the um, with the, the person, person who may be involved there. Yeah. That, And we can assess for potential um, mental and or physical issues. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as um, trying to deal with the, ho the hoarding behavior as well. Yeah, that's great. And which is great too, because we do, we, in um, another part, we work together closely on, collaboration's a big thing with public health nursing and public health in general, but having our community task force that meets mm -hmm. quarterly, um, where all the departments get together and, and discuss. community partners as well. That's right. And, we share information, do in-service training, um, and also there's a subgroup um, that discusses um, difficult situations, situations with in order people. to right. have everyone from different perspectives weigh in and come up with potential solutions. Yeah. So the, it, it, that all, public health nursing is very integrative. It, it um, intersects with so many uh, other specialties as well so mm -hmm. I mean maybe that's why maybe that's why I'm not as visible because we kind of we kind of work alongside so many people yeah. um, but that's why it's special that you're here because that's yes. the goal oh, of this, definitely. Is to, make, right. to oh, make you more visible to and make you more visible I, I look at <clears throat> having a public health nurse in your community it's it, you have someone who's invested in the community as opposed to some other communities sometimes will have They'll have nurses that have to do the mandatory things in the mm -hmm. in the town, um, but they they might end up being like contracted, and that's it's good that you at least have that resource. Right. But I think Natick is this provides even, a value added. You have that value added of yeah. um, being invested in the community. I mean, there's many ways that I feel that I'm more part of Natick than I am of my hometown. Oh, so that's so interesting. Because of, of course, but we're we're just really. Lucky to have Leela so and 
so in her thank experience. You. But health education, health. and that's another issue. That that's a whole other thing too. So that's we'll what have we're going to have you come back have another day. day. Yeah. I'd like to talk about that education. Yeah. That would this be fantastic. This was really great. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for thank the you. opportunity. I thank you and thank you, Susan. Oh, this this is great. So thank you very much for watching. This is just great, certainly for me, great information. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you will join us next time, next month, in the uh, next installment of Frank and Mary here in Natick. Thank you very much.